Next on BYUSN, if the Big 12 Conference removed the requirement, would we be okay with BYU no longer scheduling non-conference Power 5 games? Wait, would that mean no more BYU versus Utah? Well, now we're talking business. Welcome to BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Friday, May 12th. I am Spencer Linton alongside a man who I know is prepared for a very busy Mother's Day weekend, Jerem Jordan. Lots going on, but first and foremost, how many days until BYU's in the Big 12? Countdown to the Big 12. 50 days. Okay. 50 days until July 1st. 50 Let's go. days away. Let's go, baby. Okay, on today's show, uh, Brett McMurphy's report out of the Big 10 that has us thinking about Power 5 games, BYU versus Utah. We'll tell you about it. Our favorite BYU in the NFL matchups after the NFL schedule release last night. We make time for Dennis Pitta and Max Brenchley and Bruce Brockbank of the men's golf team. Join us ahead of the NCAA regional starting Monday. But first, here are today's headlines. Beginning with the NFL schedule for 2023, released yesterday. Notable games featuring former BYU players include Tyler Algier and the Atlanta Falcons taking on Jamal Williams and Taysom Hill's New Orleans Saints on November 26th. And again, in the final week of the regular season, week 18, Fred Warner's 49ers will face Puka Nakua and the LA Rams on September 17th and again in week 18. Oh, by the way, Jaron Hall begins his rookie minicamp with the Minnesota Vikings today, runs through the 15th. Men's basketball will officially play in the Vegas Showdown, previously called the Wooden Legacy, November 23rd and 24th against two of these three teams, Arizona State, NC State, and Vanderbilt. Exact matchups, times, and TV will be announced later. BYU baseball using dramatics again. They win in 13 innings, 11 to 8 against Pacific. Trailed 8-7 in the ninth until Cooper Vest doubled that brought Cole Gamble home. BYU obviously scoring three runs in the 13th inning. Easton Jones and Luke Anderson each hit a home run. Hey, postseason hopes remain alive for now. Nine Eastern on the BYU radio app for game two tonight. Game three tomorrow with BYU hoping for a sweep against Pacific. Softball begins its final regular season series at St. Mary's tonight, 6 Eastern. The Cougars need some help from LMU, who is a game up on the Cougars for the conference title. Owns the tiebreaker, having won two of three head-to-head. -head. The NCAA selection show is Sunday, 7 Eastern on ESPN2. The nationally ranked BYU men's and women's track and field teams begin their last chance meet today. It runs over the weekend. The number eight men and number 12 women will have one final chance to help athletes secure spots at the approaching NCAA regionals. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. Power five aplenty for BYU football as they move into the Big 12. 10 Power Five games on the 2023 slate, the most ever. Obviously, with BYU making the jump up in competition. With that said, Brett McMurphy, friend of the program, reported earlier this week that the Big Ten is, quote, strongly considering removing its requirement for league teams to play a Power Five non conference team annually beginning in 2024. Sources told Action Network HQ. Of note, he continues, in 2024, USC and UCLA joined the Big Ten the same year the college football playoff expands to 12 teams. So the Big 12, as of 2015, Jerem, has a requirement for Power 5 non-conference games, at least one annually. If the Big 12 were to adopt this same potential change as the Big Ten Conference, would you be okay with BYU not scheduling Power 5 non-conference games moving forward? I have argued in the past that the schedule's too tough, so I could see an argument, certainly from myself, uh, that, yeah, I'd be fine with that, with no P5s. But I love BYU versus Utah way too much. I want that at least 6 out of 10 times, you know, in a decade. So, no, I, I don't think I'm okay with this. If BYU gets to the point where they are, um, you know, consistently uh, – kind of one or two in the Big 12, and you're competing for an actual playoff spot, which you've got to probably be in the top two uh, in the Big 12 to qualify. I don't think a third team from the Big 12 will rarely get into the expanded playoff. I think that's more of an SEC Big 10 thing. 
then perhaps you need to eliminate one potential loss with a Power 5 game in non-conference. But given where BYU's at and where it's kind of been in philosophy and production on the field, I think a game is fun and needed for the fan base. So BYU and Utah needs to happen. And then there's a couple of games that I think are fun that replace that. Tom Homo has told us before, there will be some years where Utah doesn't want to play us because they're playing somebody else. See last year and this year with Florida. Yep. And then, uh, you know, BYU, Tom said, will have some years where it won't play Utah because yeah. it has a game that it likes. So looking ahead at the Power 5 schedule, according to fbschedules.com, of course, at Arkansas this year, no Utah. At Utah, then Utah the next two years. 26, you got to cancel one of these. Arizona and at Utah, you cancel Arizona. 27, at Arizona, Utah, you probably cancel at Arizona. 28, you have Ole Miss in 28 and 29. That's one where I go, you don't need Utah. Let's do a home and home with, or home and road as I say, with Ole Miss. 2030 at Utah, Virginia Tech. Is Virginia Tech a big enough deal at home to not play Utah? We'll see. 2031, Stanford. You can get rid of Stanford, play Utah. 2032, Michigan State. You host Michigan State. That's a return game that was supposed to happen in 2020, by the way. It's been pushed out to 2032. 12 years. I'm okay with Michigan State at home instead of Utah. At Virginia Tech, 2033. Again, that goes to the 30. Do we do the home and road with Virginia Tech? I would Tech? love BYU to uh, play in Blacksburg. That'd be awesome. That'd be a fun series, Yeah, interesting, right? Sandman. Let's go. 2035, Missouri. Um, is that a return eh. game from 2015 it, that was supposed to happen, I think, in 2020? It was supposed to happen in 2020, yeah. 2035? Uh, I have no plans for 2035 uh, at the moment, and, and I don't know that BYU needs this at this point. I would like BYU to play a Power 5 game in non-conference. And again, this is a stretch. We're just saying if other Power 5 team, uh, conferences went this direction, and we don't even know if the Big Ten will, but it might be in the best interest of those leagues not to um, if you're trying to make that expanded playoff. Although it can strengthen your argument to perhaps get in where you might not have. And in this situation, BYU probably needs to have one or two losses to get in. I don't, I don't see very often or at all, a three-loss non-Big Ten SEC team getting that kind of fifth or sixth or whatever, at, seventh at large. I think BYU really needs to be in the one-loss and two-loss situation. And if they get to the point where BYU is good enough, then I could see the argument where it's like, yeah, what's the point of a Power 5 in non-conference? We already have nine in league. Well, it depends on the quality of the Power 5 opponent that you schedule in non-conference. I think BYU's not going to go with a, a weakling, though. It's either Utah or a really good one. Well, they can control that a little bit, can't they now? They, they can, if they don't want to play a really strong power five, they, don't, they wouldn't have yes, to. Yes, but the BYU's had too much hubris not to. You know what I mean? Maybe, like, maybe if we're going to do a good back. one. Maybe they pulled it back. When has now. BYU pulled it back? Well, they haven't been in this situation, so I feel like they're turning a page but to what a place where they might. What evidence do we have that they would do that? Well, we, we, can't, it's hard, we, we have to see what they do when they go into the Big 12. Like, now it would make perfect sense to make that change and do something that they have never done before, and they don't let their hubris get in the way. And it's a good hubris. Like, no, we can handle it. It's like, well, let's see if BYU can. Like, what's the point? The point is to win. I'm glad that Tennessee went away because BYU would have been playing Tennessee and Arkansas this year and nine power, 11 Power 5 games. That's too many. It would have been fun to have Tennessee in Provo for yes. sure. I'd rather have that than at Arkansas. But this was a favor to Arkansas who came to Provo last year. And so now it's like, well, we did our, we held up our end of the bargain. You got to come play in Fayetteville now. Notre Dame did not. BYU got yeah, BYU paid by that. Tennessee yeah. to cancel the game and, and move into a situation where we are now. I feel like it's better, but the point remains – this is first and foremost not an ultimatum. And the way that some people are responding to this on Twitter is, oh my gosh, there's never going to be another non-conference Power 5 game for a Big Ten team. And it's like, no, no. They're it's just May taking, 12th. We're making up a topic. They're just taking away the requirement. Like, you don't Potentially, have to. It's, they're not even doing it. You don't have to. You can yeah. still... These teams could go and schedule three Power 5 teams in their non-conference schedule if they want. There's just no requirement. Yeah, so, yeah. Clearly, like, it's not an ultimatum. It, this, even if BYU opts for, you know, a few years scheduling three group of five teams or an FCS and two group of five teams, it doesn't mean that they won't ever schedule Utah again. 
Maybe the years that they don't have Utah, BYU does opt to lighten up the schedule a little bit. I don't think that they will do that. I feel like BYU uh, no. will still schedule at least one Power 5 team. Yeah. But that goes back to your original point of, well, who is that Power 5 opponent? Got to be compelling. How difficult of an opponent is that? BYU already canceled the series with Miami, just for reference. Yeah. Because and you're going to play have to. max one a year. So if BYU, I mean, they could schedule two Power Fives. Like I said, any team is, they, they can control what they want to control yeah. in the non-conference. Yeah, they know. But I feel like BYU will at most schedule one Power Five. And if it's Utah, fantastic. You said you want it six out of ten years. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's a, a, a good number. If it's eight out of ten years, I'm okay with that too. And losing a game to Utah is not going to cost BYU in a 12-team college football playoff. Yes, there's less room for error if you do lose that non-conference Power 5 game, but it's not going to ultimately cost you. Um, BYU any still any have of those an opportunity. losses could cost you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. BYU's, you're adding a little also, bit more weight to the bar. You like to utilize that you know, yeah. um, analogy, analogy for sure when, when you're talking about how difficult the schedule is. But... Losing a non-conference game to a Power 5 team, whether it's Utah or somebody else, is not going to cost you a chance to compete and play in the 12-team college football playoff. Not in that moment. It could, later it could. It could elevate you as well. Well, if you go 10-2 and two, uh, and you're out, you go, well, one of those two losses cost us. And if you, it but if you win that game... It could help you. And then you lose yeah. a game late in conference, whatever, it's like, well, body of work, they had a really strong win in non-conference against said good team, then it brings you kind of back up. So hopefully, and you never know too, like you, you cut, Utah could stink soon. You know, Ole Miss could stink soon. Um, yeah, you never know. I don't want the BYU-Utah series to go away. Like there are people who are like, good, get rid of the non the power five requirement. We don't ever want to see them again. Like, I I'm want still the mad game. about the non-invite to, to the back Maybe, goal. yeah. There's some petty they loved and vindictive us. behavior uh, there. Absolutely. No, I want BYU and Utah <laughs> to play. Um, and like I said, I yeah. think six out of ten is fun. I, I would, wouldn't be opposed to only missing two years every decade. There are some people that are like, no, nah, let's just do it every other year. Fine. It's going to be more than two, I think, based on Tom's comments. Um, because Utah, in a decade, is going to choose at least one home and road series, I think. Well, Utah has chosen don't. two. They right? chose Michigan the, in 2014 and 15, and now Florida last year and this year. Yeah, and 15 ended up being a bowl game, so it was only three instead of four years. And then for BYU, yeah, there'll be at least a series a decade. So it may be only four times out of ten. Who knows? It depends on both. And it is there is some posturing in that between the two of like, well, actually, we value this series more than playing you, so bye. And BYU typically has taken like the high road in all of these. When is BYU going to be the uh, sort of enforcer in that conversation? Um, like, with Notre, like with Notre Dame, it made sense to go to Vegas. We love playing in Vegas, like we talked about. That was like the best case scenario. Um, I know people were upset that Notre Dame didn't, didn't go to Provo. Sorry, what was BYU going to do about it? <laughs> did, did BYU have the four horsemen and Rudy and Joe Montana? No, I didn't. No, they touched down Jesus. We don't even have touchdown Jimmer. Like one day we'll have touchdown Jimmer or something. I don't know. <laughs> BYU and Utah need to still happen. Again, we're just throwing out an idea on May 12th. Uh, trying, trying to stir it up a little bit, right? But that would, that would be fun to continue to play a compelling non-conference game. But if BYU is in the, if there was a season, Spence, where BYU went 10-2 and two in the regular season and lost like the conference championship game and didn't get in, we would be like, oh, this would have been the year the G5 game would have been nice. But you play. Assuming played, they lost the non-conference Power 5 game is what you're saying. Yes. Okay. If, if you went like, yes, 10-2 and two and you were 2-1 you were and one in, in uh, you know, non-conference non and then you were like eight and one in conference play and you went to the big 12 title game and you had the shot but the, you were the first out like we would be like oh schedule too tough at the beginning but also like this is BYU the DNA is we get after it we're the underdog we try and prove the world wrong like that's the DNA of this place is no one thought we could win in 84 no one thought we could produce a Heisman no one thought we could like go to independence and make it work no one thought we'd ever get the power five in but here BYU is right so now it's time for BYU to musk up and uh, enter the Big 12, and I don't see a time where BYU chooses not to play a Power 5 team. Blaine Fowler, in non-conference, Blaine Fowler said that he wouldn't mind uh, BYU not playing a Power 5 game at one point. And that makes sense depending on your goals, right? Right now, I don't think BYU's like number one aim and mission, realistically, is win the Big 12. It's like get in and compete well. To me, that's like the first couple years. 
then you get to the point where you're like, all right, let's go compete for a Big 12 title. And if that means we still play a Power 5 team, and it's probably Utah most of the time, yes, I don't want being in a Power 5 and an expanded playoff to ruin the rivalry with Utah. To me, I don't want anything to ruin the rivalry with Utah. I want that to stay forever, six out of ten years at a time. Any coach and at player least. is going to tell you that the goal is always to win a conference championship, but sure. I understand sure. what you are saying from a realistic stepping stone standpoint. Yeah, BYU is not competing for a conference championship I this year. I why you had a, a winning game. record in the Big 12 in year one. That would be a massive success. Five and four, we'd take right now. If they had a winning record in right year now. one. Yep. Okay. And, hey. And sustain it. You, you go gonna, two and one in non-con, now you're seven and five. Going to a nice bowl game, and you had a solid first opening campaign in the Power Five. But Fantastic. coaches and players are like, no, we're ready to compete no, and for the and they championship should. right now. They should. I'm not the one throwing passes, okay? Um, <laughs> we're just talking. That's uh, easier. Our question of the day. If the Big 12 were to remove the requirement for scheduling Power Five non-conference games, and it is in place since December 8th of 2015, would you be okay if that led to BYU never playing Utah again? At N underscore Crowley19 on Twitter says, absolutely not. It's like Joker and Batman, we need each other. I'm, I'm envisioning the Lego Batman movie where the Joker is asking Batman to tell him that he hates him. Like, just say it. Just tell me you hate me. <laughs> you ask, you ask me. <laughs> Hayden Shockey on Instagram. Yes. I'm okay if BYU never played Utah again because BYU will end on a win against the Utes if they did not play after 2021. This isn't the poinsettia ball. Come on now. <laughs> but no, because it's one of college football's best rivalries. Yeah. I, I don't want it to go away. In fact, I want it to be a almost every year thing. Yeah, at least six out of ten years. I would love for BYU and Utah to be a ranked matchup every year. It it would be super compelling as a Pac-12 yeah. power taking on a Big 12 power. Or maybe it's a Big 12 game in the future. Could be a Big 12 game as well. Then it's whatever. I don't want them in the list. I want hey, BYU whatever. and Utah in the same league because then you guarantee. Now, now let's say Utah. Oh, oh. What, let's say Utah and the Pac-12 blah, 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 came into the Big 12. Now I don't need a non-conference game per se. Depending, I would like uh, some of these fun non-conference big matchups. Those are fun, right? But I don't need it in the same way yeah. that I want it now. Because you guarantee that it would happen every year as a league game. Yeah. That I'm, would be interesting. I'm okay that with, the situation I'm we okay with options remaining open, too. Especially uh, in, in years, because there are going to be 12 teams, maybe 14 teams, 16 teams. When you find out like how tough your perceived opponents are going to be in conference, then maybe you make a decision like, Hey, this year we're stacked with like the upper half of the conference. It just shook out that way in the schedule. Maybe this is the year that we schedule two G5s and one FCS. Hopefully at some point we'll kind of know like what the 12-team schedule looks like. I'm not saying who you're playing. I'm saying how it's rotated. Yeah. So that you – and in a given year, it's hard to know how good West Virginia is. You know what I mean? It's, it's, always, hard, it's always a wild card. But you know you're going to have like some – six out of those nine games are going to be like really, yeah. really tough. Maybe you have a couple that aren't as tough. But right now, there's not a gimme. Kansas made a bowl game. It's like, oh, that team's at least decent, right? Apparently, they have and the they, best quarterback situation of anybody in the conference. Apparently, Kansas is going like, to win the natty this year. What? I'm okay with options, though. Take the requirement away, and then you decide. Yeah, well, this year we're going to play a 10th power five. This year we're not. I'm okay with that. Yeah, they just schedule too far out to really yeah. <laughs> like effectively do that, I guess. Get the uh, Google sheet going there, Tom. BYU baseball won dramatically last night at Pacific. Ninth inning rally, then an extra inning win. What's in store tonight? Game two, 9 Eastern on the BYU radio app. It's a Friday. We're feeling generous, especially Jerem, because uh, we've made time for one of the best tight ends I don't in the schedule history the guests. of college football. Producers. He is Dennis Pitta. He is a Super Bowl <laughs> champion. He's got strong opinions coming up next on BYU Sports Nation.
Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. This mid-sized truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new Frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dowling Nissan Southtown in South Jordan. These are the Croft children, Ryan and Emma. So we get your bags on board. We've had a report come in about possible rebel activity along the border. Mr. Croft, I'm Colonel Liborio. At dawn, we have a huge number of aircraft and ground personnel searching the entire area. Our children can't spend the night out there. Search and rescue work at night is dangerous. So what do we do now? We continue the search until we find them. This time, a four-man rush. And there's Pitta. Pitta bounced into the end zone. How about Dennis Pitta? On fourth down, and they got it. Pitta. They got Pitta doubled. He's an All-American. pretty good. He's a Super Bowl champion. I got a story about that exact play. Okay, I'm about to call the women's volleyball match that night. I can't remember who BYU played. And I've got my headphones on during the prayer. And that play happens. And in the truck, they're freaking out. They're going, Dennis Pitta just scored a touchdown. And it's the prayer. And I go, Dennis Pitta just scored a touchdown? Like that loud. And everyone turns around like, why are you talking during the prayer? You're just I was excited the Dennis scored. And, and true to form, Dennis and Selma popped off. <laughs> they couldn't get the chin, chin strap tight enough, I guess. One of the greatest college football tight ends yes. in the history of the game. Still holds the record for most yards by a tight end in college. Amazing. Still. Alongside Jerem Jordan, I'm Spencer Linton. Let's welcome him into the Big program on a Friday. Him, okay? Yes, there is time for Dennis Pitta, who joins us from his new home in beautiful, sunny Southern California. Dennis, welcome back to What's the up, show. Dennis? That was the nicest intro you guys have ever done for me. <laughs> Normally, it's just like, oh, this guy's on again, but I, I appreciate that. There was actual real excitement by Jerem there to I, have me on. I was so. reminded of those great plays, man. It was fun to watch you play at the Brigham. You made what Jerem. A start, what a start to this interview. I know. I know. It's, you made it blurt out during a prayer. We're, we're peaking early. Yeah. <laughs> Dennis, we've been talking about the non-conference Power 5 requirements specifically for the Big Ten, it's come up that maybe they're going to take that away and essentially lighten the schedule or give, you, give teams the option to do so. Michigan didn't play one last year. Helped them. Yeah. So we took it to, okay, well, would we be okay if BYU didn't have a non-conference Power 5 requirement in scheduling in the Big 12? Where do you stand on that and how it could potentially affect BYU and Utah as non-conference opponents? Uh... I like not having to play a power five team in the non-conference schedule, to be completely <laughs> honest. I mean, nice. you look at some of the best teams. I mean, Alabama does this seemingly every year where they just play a bunch of cupcake teams before they have to get into SEC play, which makes a ton of sense to me because you go play in the SEC, you play in the, you know, the, the big 10 or big 12 or whatever it may be. And you have P five games each and every week. And, and for a team like BYU, that's a rigorous schedule, especially right now when you're just entering a conference like that. And so um, I love to see the, you know, the, the quote unquote cupcake type games early on in that season before you have to get into that grueling schedule and, and play all those big 12 teams. And so um, I, I will say I would love to see Utah on the schedule every year. I, I mean, I don't think any BYU fan would ever, would ever say they wouldn't because it's just such a fun game. And, and I hate that that rivalry has been tabled for a lot of years just simply because of the scheduling uh, differences and all that. And, and that's just a game that has to be played every year, in my opinion. So uh, aside from Utah, which is, you know, arguably a top 10 team almost every year right now. And so um, <laughs> that that's a tough non-conference game. And so if you can have Utah on the schedule and then, you know, a bunch of non non P five teams, I think that's that, you know, plays plays out perfectly, but, I'm not for the scheduling that, you know, hammer yourself early on and then and then get into Big 12 play and, and just, you know, try to hold on and survive. So, um, you know, get get tuned up a little bit with some with some easier games. And I like how this schedule shakes out kind of like that. 
To be fair to Alabama, they played Texas last year and this year. So they, they are playing somebody. But I see your point of – Yeah, getting... but traditionally they've been taking a lot of heat because of their, their non-covered scheduling, which, which I totally agree with. I, I think Alabama does it right because the last thing you want is to have to play a grueling game early on. And, yes, they've played, you know, Texas and some other good teams early on. But um, SEC is tough enough. Like, yeah. why do that to yourself? The easiest solution to this is that Utah is in the Big 12. Because then it's a league game, and then we don't feel the need to maybe go get a non-conference game that's unique. Although, we do love a tough schedule, almost more than a game. Uh, Independence was pretty fun that way. <laughs> but in the Big 12, hey, we, we're, we're in it to win it. Um, so let's go. Okay, um, in terms of uh, the, the win total, odds makers are putting a low number on BYU, somewhere between 4.5 and 5.5 and and wins going into the season. What's your sort of expectation, given that Vegas is saying that? Uh, it's tough because uh, it, it's not going to be it's not going to be easy in the Big Twelve. I mean, I understand why it's at four and a half, five and a half, somewhere in there. I mean, if you look at the schedule, I mean, you can make an argument that yeah, I mean, getting to five wins is a pretty decent accomplishment in the first year in the Big Twelve. But um, I think BYU is going to steal a couple games that they're going to be underdogs in. Um, they may lose a game or two that they are favored in, which you know we've seen in years past, which is always unfortunate, but. Um, I think they're going to be around that six mark. I I'll take the over on the five and a half for sure. Um, but listen, they're going to have nine straight. I mean, really 10 straight when you consider Arkansas yeah. P5 games after the first two. And so, I mean, BYU, yeah, we've had some tough independent schedules, but nothing like that. And so uh, I think you have to be realistic as a fan. I mean, there's going to be growing pains in the Big 12. There just are. Yeah, fans aren't realistic, and we don't know Dennis. What... <laughs> well, I get that. I, I, I understand that. And, it's all and good. I, I don't, I don't want to be realistic. You know, I, I love, you know, putting the blue goggles on and thinking we're going to get, you know, nine, ten wins. But it's just, I, I think you have to table your expectations a little bit because of the circumstances. And, you know, for, if this is three, four, five years down the road and we've been a, a Big 12 team for a while, I think it totally changes. But uh, your first year having to play ten straight P5 games – it's going to be tough, and who knows what this team is. I mean, you have a yeah. whole new quarterback. You know, I love Keaton Slovis, and I, and I love the group around him. Um, but who knows? Every team is so different. I mean, you don't know how injuries are going to play out. You don't know anything. And so I think a good conservative number is probably a 6-7 win uh, season. And I think if you, if you get to seven wins, you should be really happy with that as a BYU fan. And, and I know a lot of people won't be, and a lot of people won't love me saying that. But, um, you know, at the same time, you have to be realistic. Dennis Pitta bringing the prime perspective to BYU Sports Nation. The Pitta perspective, if you will. Dennis, I'm going to throw a couple of stats at you, and I'll say they're affecting how I'm looking at the season for BYU. You tell me where you stand on this. But traditionally speaking, if you look back across the last four to five decades, BYU wins 40% of their Power 5 games. That, there's been an uptick in that in the last few years, but I'm throwing out that exception, just saying, okay, 40% of your Power 5 games. BYU has 10 this year. They won 40%. That would be four wins, coupled with two wins that they're supposed to get in early in the season. Now you're 6-6. Six and six. Then over the last five years, BYU is one of only four FBS teams to have a winning record as an underdog. They're 10-8 and eight in the 18 games over the last five years where they have been a Vegas underdog. So I'm buying heavily into those two things, and I think BYU is going to probably win seven games. They'll just figure out how to do it. How do you see that? Do, do those things matter at all when you look at the history of what BYU has typically done and their success as an underdog and how you are projecting BYU to play this season? Um. That was a lot of really nerdy stats and statistics <laughs> that you threw at me. I'm channeling my inner uh, Jerem Jordan. <laughs> I uh, I guess I'm I'm not a big analytics guy from that perspective. I mean, uh, yeah, the 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 past is a great indicator of of what you might get in the future. But um, every team is so different. I mean, you guys haven't played football. I have clearly so. Um, <laughs> I think I have a better understanding that, you know, each and every team, there's so much turnover from year to year on, on a, on a college football team, certainly on an NFL team. You just, 
you know, you don't know what you're going to get every season. And so, yeah, the, I mean, listen, I have them right at like six or seven wins. And, and that's with a couple upsets. That's with a couple, you know, winning a couple games where they're going to be underdogs. Yeah. And I don't know. I, I, I'm sure, you know, the, those odds aren't out yet. I mean, how many games on this schedule is BYU going to be an underdog? Probably a decent amount once you get into Big 12 play. And so, um, I, I, I just, yeah, I mean, statistics aside, I'm right there with you. Like I said, like, I, I think that six, seven win number is, you know, a pretty good optimistic number to be completely honest. Yeah. I mean, it could, it could certainly be worse. <laughs> and I don't think we want that. Um, but listen, you get into big 12 play and, and, you know, you're on the road in Texas and then you, you know, you, even at home, you have Oklahoma coming into town and, and th- there's just some tough games that, you know, it could go either way with, with a lot of these teams. And so, you know, hopefully you get lucky with injuries. Hopefully the ball bounces your way in a couple of these games. Hopefully, you know, you get a couple turnovers that maybe you shouldn't have and you just never know. And so, you know, statistics are great, but, uh, you know, we'll see how everything plays out on, on the field. We have the NFL schedule now. Certainly more Cougars in the NFL, especially at skill positions than we've had in a long time, maybe ever. Dave McCann argued perhaps it's the best group uh, ever this week in the Deseret News from BYU in the NFL. Are there any matchups that really stick out to you that you're looking forward to watch among Cougar, uh, Cougars playing Cougars? You guys are giving me a lot of credit. You think I'm out there studying these NFL uh, <laughs> schedules? I thought I was saying you this question before the interview. <laughs> yeah, you know what? If you think I'm preparing for these interviews, um, you're sorely mistaken. See, Dennis, you haven't hosted a TV show before um, like us, so... <laughs> You got, uh, I'm sorry, you guys wanted me to go study all the NFL schedules before this. <laughs> all you have funny. to study is the BYU guys on those um, teams, bro. Yeah, my bad. So so go ahead, throw some matchups at me. How about this? But, uh, how about, how about Tyler Algier and the Falcons against in a rivalry game against the Saints with Taysom and Jamal? Yeah, though that sounds like a great one. Um, Twice a year. I'll probably be watching that one. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, how about the 49ers? The 49ers ever play? Uh, they play the Rams twice with Puka. Guys, so you got, got Fred the, Warner and yeah, Puka Nakua matching up. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Like, uh, listen, I, I, I think you, you're laughing at me because I'm, uh, you think I'm, I'm trying saying, to just make something. We're just up watching here. the wheels. <laughs> <laughs> no, here's, here's what I was actually going to say. I think there hasn't been a time in the NFL that I, in recent memory where you have so many impactful BYU football players on roster. Amen. Amen. And, Amen. And I think that's and I, I think that's the coolest thing. I mean, yep. you look at Fred Warner's arguably the best player at his position. Yes. Um, you know, you got all, all these running backs now with Tyler Algier and, and, and Jamal and it, you know, impact guys. Taysom, obviously, and what he's been doing. Um, I mean, you could you could list so many different guys, and then all the all the newcomers. You know, Puka. What's he gonna, you know, do with the Rams? What's his role gonna be? And, and, and you know, is Jaron getting getting got an opportunity in in Minnesota? I mean, there's so many you know cool things to to look for in this NFL season, but there's so many important Cougars on rosters that, you know, when I was playing in the NFL, I'm trying to think like you know Austin Colley was another one that was out there, um, who obviously was was a great player. Um, there weren't a ton of uh, of BYU guys that were, you know, making big impacts for their teams in, in the NFL at that time. And so I think that's what's the coolest thing. BYU starting to really churn out some some good NFL talent. And, uh, and now, you know, you have a ton of matchups, even though I don't know what those matchups are, but you have a ton of great matchups in the NFL uh, where you can watch Cougars, you know, be out there shining and, and, and doing their thing each and every Sunday. Good save, Dennis. <laughs> good, good, good save. Thank you. By the way, that beanbag Thank looks you. super comfortable to your right. Is that a beanbag? It is. Yeah. It is. It's comfortable. Uh, it's a beanbag. Yeah, yeah, it's a beanbag. This is kind of a, a theater golf simulator room that I'm Ooh. in right now. But uh, Ooh. nice, dude. Okay. So it's a it's a cozy room. But um, yeah. So listen, if you guys think I read over the questions that you're going to ask me, I like to go in. <laughs> I like to go in fresh. I like that. Any, I like that. <laughs> I, like I don't to want to be premeditated. On any, what a like... great excuse. <laughs> <laughs> no premeditated answers, you know right? I, no you know premeditated answers from the hip. Yeah. I like to just go off the cuff, you know, speak from the heart. I don't want some kind of, you know, I don't need to study the playbook coach. I'll just go in and go into the huddle. No, just, just, just tell throw me, me the ball and I'll get open. Yeah, I'll get open. That's right. right. 
Uh, great <laughs> stuff. Dennis, uh, congratulations on getting into your new home. Super cool setup you got there. Um, we'd love to have <laughs> you, you back in Studio B at some point. So, you know, make some time for us if you're in Utah this summer, man. We'd love to have read, you here. Read the hey, questions I, we send you next I, time, okay? Yeah, I will for sure. Uh, no, listen, you won't. I don't need to be, you know, I, I don't need to be rehearsed like you guys. Okay, I don't need all this preparation. You just come on and you just just wing it. I will tell you since I since I've been in Studio B um, with my other two compadres, Max and Austin, mm -hmm. um, both have gone down with serious injuries, and I'm a little nervous. I'm I'm the next. Obviously, Max towards Achilles. Austin did the same thing playing basketball a couple weeks ago. Oh, so shoot! I am. Take uh, it easy. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm on high alert here. It's like okay, Final so Destination we'll, uh, stuff going on. Dennis, right we're giving you BYU Sports Nation karma to avoid any sort <laughs> I need all the, of injury. I need all the karma like yeah. good, good vibes headed your way, man. Hey, it's great to catch yeah, up with you, brother. You. Can't wait to discuss the Big 12 with you. All right. Thanks, guys. Dennis, Appreciate it. You got it. Dennis Pitta with the Pitta perspective <laughs> on BYU Sports Nation. Well, it started well, right? <laughs> started with a really nice introduction. Listen, no, Dennis, Dennis is good. He's really good. Did he not read the questions that we sent him? Maybe. Like, hey, here's just no. No? Okay. His, his wit is his, his is good wit carries to him. just carry it. Yeah. His, his wit and, and good looks and charm really carry him. <laughs> if you've missed any interviews, uh, compelling interviews like that one, uh, Deep Blues. Deep Clearly Blues. you've not played football like if me. If you want to watch Dennis Pitta's helmet come off a lot, go to BYSN.com and watch some old football games. Uh, we already threw out a few of our favorite NFL matchups. But what's the... Order with former Cougars, yeah. right? We, we, we mentioned a couple of those. We'll, we'll dive into the specifics of that next on BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Accidents don't just happen nine to five. They happen when you least expect them. The team at Siegfried and Jensen is here for you 24 seven, nights, weekends, every day, every hour really here for you no matter when you call us you'll speak to a real person and have access to the same expertise and personal attention as always and get the legal help you need when you need it nights weekends every day every hour 24 7. learn more at siegfriedandjensen.com if you're looking to build your brand awareness and increase market share as byu moves into the big 12 this is the place byu, BYU athletics, athletics. We can provide the tools you need to make sure your company is seen and heard. BYU Athletics is where you can align your products and services with loyal fans that cheer for our Cougars. And they can also help your business win. Learn more about what a partnership with BYU Athletics and your company will look like. After all, this is the place. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Time for what? As you wish. Are you crazy? <laughs> It'll be fun. Before I was a coach at BYU, I was a BYU fan. When you hear the crowd roar, that makes it more exciting, more of an adrenaline rush. BYU sports, it's all about the fans. Follow BYU Sports Nation on social media for content throughout the day on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. He is Jerem Jordan. I am Spencer Linton. Happy Friday. Let's whip it. Cougar Whip Around presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. One question only. The NFL schedule was released yesterday. What are your favorite matchups between two teams with at least one BYU Cougar? Well, we just brought up with Dennis mm -hmm. as a favor to him. Yep. That the because Atlanta Falcons, research. okay, the, the Atlanta Falcons because literacy, <laughs> or the Red Stallions, if you watch the Tennessee <laughs> Titans schedule release. <laughs> oh, good. They changed their Twitter handle to Red Stallions last night. I'm dead serious. The Falcons, aka the Red Stallions, taking on the New Orleans Saints. 
Taysom Hill, Jamal Williams, Tyler Algier all on the field at the same time. That is such a fun matchup. And Life. it's such a like an intense rivalry matchup, right? I, Those teams I love hate it. each other. Yes, that's my number one. My number two is seven, September 17th and week 18, Niners Rams. Yes. Fred Warner, Puka Nakua. Number three, December 21st, New Orleans Saints at LA Rams. Yeah. So you get Puka. the Puka and Taysom and Jamal matchup, which is fun. And then uh, October 15th, Warner and Keone Taki Taki, Niners Browns. I think that's fun. And then November 12th is my fifth. Saints taking on the Vikings. You got Kairos Tonga there. And Jaron Hall, ho hopefully, maybe playing. We'll see what, you know, Kirk Cousins, obviously. Yeah. If he stays healthy, he's the guy. We'll see if Jaron's the backup. Be so fun. fun. Like, Dennis is right, and we've talked about it. And, and Dave's argument is sound in the Deseret News. This is one of the unique times, maybe the best ever, that yeah. Dave argues, of skill position players. It's hard for us to be like, dude, Panthers, Vikings, you have two linemen. You know what I mean? And we'll see with Jaron. But there are, there are a lot of skill position guys. And, and hopefully we have Caleb Hayes with the Jaguars and D'Angelo yeah. Mandel making the Cowboys. We'll see what those guys as well. Jerem, as currently constituted, there are 21 BYU players that are on active rosters right now. Now, I know that four of those are free agents and are going to have some work to do, but there are some notable free agents that are not listed with teams right now. Kyle Van Noy, Daniel Sorensen, Harvey Longy. Yeah. Okay. We think that those three would be. So we anticipate those three will end up somewhere, so we could so have knows? some more matchups featuring BYU players against BYU players that we just don't know about yes. yet. Maybe Danny's done. I don't know. Hopefully he's still in the league. But yeah, those three guys, we'll see. We'll see where they end up. It's going to be fun. More than ever, NFL so cool. watching with BYU guys in it. Love it. Awesome. After. Yeah. After a thrilling win at the West Coast Conference Championships, Max Brenchley and his head coach, Bruce Brockbank, will give us a preview of the NCAA Regionals. Jeremy, is there another 90-foot putt in there somewhere from Max Brenchley? 100 foot. <laughs> this is BYU Sports Nation. Crank it up. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. They prefer to be bringing the heat. Getting set for success. Demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again. And you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. BYU Food To Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food To Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. White House staff. We are the first family, and we were hoping that you could help us out. You want me to babysit some Russian kid? Someone is looking to hurt the both of our families, TJ. How is this even possible? An American falls in a Russian. Why should I be scared? You've got Max. <laughs> Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation live in Studio B. I recently had a chance to sit down with the West Coast Conference men's golf champions from BYU, specifically head coach Bruce Brockbank and Max Brenchley, one of his stars, about the Cougars and their shot in the approaching regionals. Here's that combo. All right, gentlemen, you've got some fantastic mojo working, having won the Ping Cougar Classic and then rallying to win a dramatic West Coast Conference Championship. Now you get set for regionals. So this question is for both of you. Coach, I'll start with you. How would you explain the feeling and the momentum around BYU men's golf right now? 
Well, it's, it's surely exciting. Uh, the guys have been playing really well, uh, making a lot of birdies. We've had three or four, uh, well, two tournaments this fall or this spring. The guys have uh, really stepped up and just played some incredible golf. We shot 54 under par in Hawaii and then 40 at the Cougar which kind of got the ball rolling and uh, you could kind of see it, you know, with a long winter, the guys just come, you know, getting out on the green grass and, and working really hard. The momentum was there and, and uh, it was exciting to watch them kind of get rolling and, and um, play such great golf. I'm glad you brought up warm weather because that's certainly part of finally feeling a good vibe in this environment in Utah. Max, how would you explain the vibe and the culture around BYU men's golf at this moment? I think it's been awesome, uh, you know, starting, you know, when we played in Hawaii, I think that was kind of like, for us, it unlocked a lot of potential for us, We're like, man, this is how good we can be, right? And so I think we had a couple of stretches where we played really good golf in the spring, but um, I think it's similar to last year where we kind of caught our stride, you know, right towards the postseason, and I think, you know, if you look at all the guys on the team that are going to be playing, you know, the, these next couple of weeks, it's, everyone's playing some of their best golf, so... I think overall we're all really excited. Um, there's a lot of good mojo coming in and uh, a lot of putts being made. So that's kind of what it comes down to. And I think that we're all seeing the ball go in the hole, which is the most important thing for us. And so keep that going into this next week. Well, speaking of putts being made, we have to address the 90-foot bomb on number 14 at the West Coast Conference Championships in Bremerton. When you hit that putt, at what point are you thinking that might actually go in? Yeah, I think uh, you never really think a 90-footer is ever really going to go in until it actually goes in. But I think halfway it kind of went up over the hill, right, and then it kind of dropped down and then it started breaking back. And probably 20 feet out, it was like, that's on a really good line. And then Todd, in the video, he's yelling, you know, do it to me, do it to me. I'm like, all right, if he's excited, I probably should be excited. And then, you know, went in pretty good speed. And it was, it was at a very crucial point in the tournament for us. So, um, but yeah, it was, it was pretty, pretty special, probably the longest putt I've made in competitive golf so cool that was my next question is yeah. that the greatest putt you've ever made in competitive golf uh I mean yeah it's up there top five for sure longest for sure and then I guess under the circumstances I mean it was very timely so it was it was a fun one to make for that's sure. wild yeah. where are you when you find out that that putt was made what's happening I was, in I was a little late because I try to avoid the phone as much as possible um, but not only was that putt key to kind of get the ball rolling for the team in our little comeback, but the eight footer that he made on the last hole, he knew that we, you know, we were tied or maybe one ahead and Max, uh, you know, he called me off the, you know, up by the cart path and said, come and look at this. And as we walked down there, he was, Hey, tell me where we're at, what's going on. I think he had a pretty good idea. And he says, what do you think this putt's going to do? And I said, well, Tyson Shelley was right here and the ball went a little bit left. And he goes, he looked at it and he goes, it's going to go a little left. And I said, yeah. And I just walked away. And when it was his turn to putt, he knocked it right in the middle of the hole. So that was, <laughs> <laughs> that, that and a couple other putts were very key that he made coming in. Bruce Brockbank, the head coach of men's golf, and Max Brinsley, one of the stars with us on BYU Sports Nation. Coach, you were just named West Coast Conference Coach of the Year. You're not one to draw a lot of attention to yourself. In fact, I know it probably makes you feel a little bit uncomfortable. <laughs> so naturally, we're going to ask you, how do you feel about being named Coach well, of the Year? Well, I'm going to answer it the way I've answered it uh, a few times in the last couple of weeks. Those honors come from great play, and that's what these guys have done. And, and having, you know, if, if not, well, it's the best assistant coach in the country by far in Todd Miller. There's, there's a lot of great coaches out there, but we all know that uh, with his work and, and these guys, that's how you get those honors. So we'll go ahead and push it where <laughs> credit's due. Max, what's it like to play for Bruce Brockbank and Todd Miller? What made it so enticing for you who were a highly recruited guy and could have gone a lot of different places? Right. Um, I think just, you know, the support that they offer, you know, you always know that um, Coach Brockbank and Coach Miller are always going to have your back no matter what, right? You could be playing some of your worst golf and some of your best golf and they treat you the exact same. And so I've always felt like, you know, coach, both coaches have always had my best interests in all things, you know, on the golf course, off the golf course, which, you know, bigger than golf, they're just amazing individuals who, you know, live amazing lives and you know are the people that I want to become when I'm you know a father and whatnot and so I think just golf course they're amazing influences and off the golf course as well so 
a lot of good things with coach, coach. like it or not the the spotlight's on you right now. <laughs> there we go <laughs> well we you know we try to lead out a little bit but uh you know um like i said we've we've got a great group and uh confidence is high and we're excited about uh the next few weeks not to mention you're a guy that can show up 10 minutes before your tea time and still shoot a 67 right yeah, like casually, you just, just casually. figure it out yeah <laughs> There was a time where it was 67. Now it's probably 74. <laughs> okay. I guess we'll settle for the 74. <laughs> Ten minutes before you're Still supposed modest. to tee off. Incredible. NCAA regionals approach at the Institute Golf Club in San Jose. Max, you mentioned this team, like last year, was kind of hitting your stride at the right time. What do you know about the course, and why do you like your chances at regionals? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of interesting. This golf course is really exclusive. Not a lot of guys have played it. We're kind of trying to figure out details from, you know, all different people. And it's funny, like Todd Miller grew up in Northern California. He's like, I've never even heard of it. So if Todd Miller hasn't heard of a golf course, right, it must be pretty exclusive. So um, looking at it, we've heard that it's long, a really long golf course. If they play it all the way back, it's 8,000 yards, which... Whoa. Yeah, to give you some perspective, like a 7,000 is probably your pretty typical, you know, in Utah. So long golf course, which I think benefits us as a team. Um, overall, I think we're really good at, you know, driving the ball, um, longer hitters for most of us. And so I think that plays to our advantage. And um, greens, I hear, are pretty fast and firm. And I think we're all really good putters as well. So I think those two aspects can be mm. big advantages for us. Going are you the game. longest hitter off the tee? On the team, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and say maybe Angus. Okay. Our, yeah, the South African might get me a little bit. But, you know, there's, there's, a, there's always debate out there for who <laughs> is the longest. But I can, I can hit it with the best of them. Okay. So we'll, we'll leave it at that. For sure. Yeah. Coach, you see 8,000 yards and fast greens. And, and Max says it kind of shapes out nicely for our team. How do you feel about that statement? You know, it's uh, talking to the coach from San Jose State, a good friend of mine, John Kennedy. They only get out there one time a year and he has a lot of friends and so that tells you how exclusive it is but he just said hey we're not going to play all 8,000 yards but it's going to be everything you can handle so be ready for it it's going to be a great challenge for our guys we're going to have to hit a lot of long and you know straight drives and uh, we're going to have to figure out how to make a few putts as well but it will be you know, everything, like I mentioned, everything that we want. But, you know, what a great challenge and, and excited for that opportunity. You got your longtime rivals, Pepperdine, in the regional. Yes. And I know it mattered to a lot of the BYU guys, all of you guys, to get them in the West Coast Conference Championship, especially now that you're going to the Big 12 and it's the end of an era. But they show back up in the regional. So how do you handle that dynamic? How, how is the relationship with Pepperdine as a rival in golf? You know, they're a great team. And Michael Beard does a great job. And, uh, you know, we haven't um, beat them for a little while. So to get them at the conference championship was great. And uh, we know that we're going to have to have our best stuff if we want to stay with them uh, next week at the Institute. How do you feel about the rivalry with Pepperdine, Max? Like Coach said, right, they're obviously, you know, a top team in the nation. It's always nice to be able to go in and, you know, compete with them. And in, in this last week, it was fun to be able to beat them, especially. And so... Obviously, I think that, you know, it was fun being able to play with them and being able to see, hey, these guys are the best in the country, you know, one of the best, but we're just as capable as, you know, playing, you know, when our good golf is with their good golf, we're just as, com we, we can compete with them at any given time. So, um, yeah, I think that's, that kind of sums it up for me is that they're good, but, you know, we're also really good as well. There you so. go. And you're rolling for yeah. sure. Uh, we'll finish with this. Obviously, the goal is to get through regionals, to play well enough to get to nationals and just give yourself a shot at that national championship and put together that, that special few days. So, Coach, uh, if you wouldn't mind, remind everyone what you have to do at regionals to get into a spot at nationals. There's six regionals around the country, two east, two central, two west. You've got 13 or 14 teams, depending on how many uh, individuals are in each regional, and you've got to be the, one of the low five teams. And uh, if there's a tie for fifth, whether it's two, three, four teams, it'll be sudden death because there's only five moving on. And so that's what you've got to do. Um, every regional has great teams, and mm. to get one of those spots, you better play your best stuff. Max, do you feel like you're one of the 30 best teams in the country and belong at nationals? I definitely do. Definitely do. I think that, like I've said, you know, at the start that we're playing some of our best golf and our best golf is just as good as anyone else's in the country. So we're excited to go out there and, you know, compete and do all that we can to, uh, you know, make that top 30 and be in Scottsdale. 
Let's the end go. Of the month, so it'll be great. I'm giving you BYU Sports Nation karma uh, in any way that I can to help you go out and perform. Okay, Good Max, deal. you're already incredible. So you're gonna maybe this will allow you to make another big putt. That's, I feel another 90 some... footer coming this week. Yeah, I feel another 90 <laughs> footer coming. <laughs> okay, you just make sure that you and Todd are filming while he does it, right? So we can have another squeal. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. Specifically Let's do for it. Todd. Um, but we're super excited for you. Hopefully you have ideal weather conditions too. That's certainly a factor when you tee off, how the wind's blowing, how things are going. So this, the karma is for good weather and for a few extra made putts. Good. Thanks, gentlemen. Congratulations yeah. on everything. Look forward to watching you uh, at regionals. Thank you. Thank you. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork offers a large inventory of Ford vehicles, including a selection of cars and trucks, providing a range of transportation choices. From the Ford Fusion sedan and the Edge crossover SUV to a range of pickups, including the F-150. Each product line comes with options to enhance performance, comfort, and safety. Think Ford, think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. The heroes are taking over Saturday mornings on BYU TV. Heroes who are brave, smart, and wield magical powers. Heroes who are good friends, problem solvers, and kind to everyone. Heroes who work together to lift and inspire, to make someone's day. Watch your favorite heroes in action Saturday mornings on BYU TV. And then go be a hero yourself. These are the Croft children, Ryan and Emma. So we get your bags on board. We've had a report come in about possible rebel activity along the border. Mr. Croft, I'm Colonel Liborio. At dawn, we have a huge number of aircraft and ground personnel searching the entire area. Our children can't spend the night out there. Search and rescue work at night is dangerous. So what do we do now? We continue the search until we find them. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Our lead voice of the day presented by PAX Healthcare Elevated. 22 guy on IG says, I watched Beck to Harleen in 06 and beating we took in 2011. I don't know how you can say no to that game if you've been there. Play forever on BYU yes. in Utah. Today's Rise and Shout Out presented by Mountain America, official credit union of BYU Athletics. It's Mother's Day. And thanks to Dennis for joining us. Bye. <laughs>